Live from the USA Gymnastics Studios, this is News Talk A30 WCCO. The Gymnastics Olympic Team Trials are coming next June. Secure your seats today at usagymtrials.com. There is an event coming up uh, next weekend, as a matter of fact. Not this weekend, next weekend, October 28th. It runs for about six hours in the afternoon or the morning to the, through the afternoon at the Bloomington Armory. It's called Falcon 23, and it's put together by the Minnesota Comic Book Association and somebody who's very well connected to the Minnesota Comic Book Association is an old classmate of mine and somebody who's been a, a part of the comic book scene. Joel Thingval joins me. He's also a, a well-known Twin Cities actor. You've seen him many places. If, if we were on television right now, you'd say, oh, I, I recognize that guy. I don't know from where, but I've seen him before. Joel, uh, how, the heck, how the heck are you? Tell me uh, about comic books and your longtime connection to them. Well, John, uh, when we grew up in the... 50s and 60s, comic books were all over the place. Yeah. You know, we, when almost every kid in grade school during our time probably read comic books, but then, you know, we graduated to junior high and maybe 50, 60% of the people moved on to other things, you know, and then by the time went to high school and girls and cars and that, there was maybe a half dozen that still remained. And <laughs> I was one of those half dozen. <laughs> <laughs> well, to the point where you were quite a collector yourself, but you are also proprietor of, of one of the Twin Cities' best comic book shops at one time. Well, it, you know, comic book fandom all started right around 1972. It was an offshoot of science fiction fandom, which started in 68 at the University of Minnesota when a group started putting on what became Minicon and Convergence, and comic fans started to show up in too many numbers, and somehow the two groups didn't mix, so we had to break off. And in 72, a fellow named David Murs put out a call and for, to start what was called the Minnesota Comics and Fantasy Association and had monthly backyard meetings, which had 20, 25 people, then 30, then 50, then 75, and it was like, this was too many for my backyard, and decided to rent a sheet metal workers union hall, and the first comic book convention happened in November 1973. And from that grew the first comic book only store, which was Comic City, in 1974, which was on the corner of 31st and Hennepin. I remember it very well, yeah. Five years until... Everything on that corner was sold and turned into apartment buildings and that, and it still exists. Comic City had an interesting history. I was its first employee in 74, worked there until 79, came in as an owner in the early 80s, and then we eventually sold it to a fellow who unfortunately didn't pay his bills, got evicted, but two of the former owners lived in the house and back, the store was originally a mom-and-pop grocery store that had an insurance office next door and a three-bedroom house. But then they moved in and established a new name for a store, which was Comic Book College, or the College of Comic Book Knowledge, which is still in existence, now in a warehouse area out in Roseville. All right, now I, let me get... You know, uh, probably I, I, half, I, of my, uh, half of 30 years working in that store. I want to get specific about now what's coming up at FallCon 23 next weekend at the Bloomington Armory. If you go to mncba.org, you can find a link and get more information there. It's also a Facebook page. But, but tell me, is this a chance now for people to show up and swap comic books, buy comic books, um, meet some of the comic book creators? Yes, it's a, it's a chance just to get together with people. It's on a smaller scale. This is kind of like the third reincarnation that has now happened of the local fan-friendly comic book convention. Again, you know, that sprung out of the backyard meetings. Dave and I did comic book conventions for 10 years up through 83. 
they kind of continued and lingered on uh, and then kind of started to go kaput. And then another group of fans got together at Annie's Parlor in 1988 and said, hey, we can put on a comic book convention. And that group lasted for 35 years, culminating in big shows happening at the state fairgrounds. But then COVID came in and kind of shut everything down. And the remnants of that group have kind of faded off into the past. And now we have a new group that have come together of about 20, 25 people who are keeping the convention fever alive in a fan-friendly atmosphere. And the good news is is that's going to return to the fairgrounds next fall. Oh, good. Now, let me ask you a couple of questions about your own connection to comic books here. Do you still have a comic book collection, or did you have to kind of like, because you saw every comic book that was there as a proprietor of Comic City back in the day, did you have to sort of uh, uh, like, okay, okay, that's enough. Don't I can't keep buying these comic books. I, I, ca- I can't keep eating the, uh, the baked goods in the bakery here. Um, did you have to divest of some of these comic books? Uh, yes, over time, you know, I've touched probably pretty much every comic book that has ever been published. And, well, I'm not driving a Mercedes or a Cadillac, sadly. <laughs> but, but no, over, you know, I, I, I collected them and that they were worth money was at some point, And some of them are going for outrageous sums now, but it, it, it was enjoying them. It was enjoying the people that I met through the course of, you know, my 50 years in the hobby, traveling around to different conventions. Uh, you know, that's, that was the joy. Well, you, you know, you, you've turned it into something great. And, and what kind of ages do you see now when you look at, like, Fall Con 23 at the Bloomington Armory on, on, the, on the 28th uh, from 10 until 4? What kind of ages uh, gather around comic books these days, Joel? Well, it, it is going to be interesting. I'm doing a panel at 11 o'clock, and I'm still expecting that there's probably going to be a few customers from those 74, 75, 76 days that are still around. You have to remember that comic books didn't start until about 39, 40, you know, and the first generation of comic book people, well, I'm from the second generation that started in the late 60s, early 70s, and there were very few people that were collectors over the age of 40 at that time. You know, now we have probably a few more that are in my age range that are 60 in the 50s, but there are also kids that have come in because of the movies and that, but there's also a new direction that comics have gone, which is, you know, the graphic novels. And I see it with my grandkids, the uh, Captain Underpants, you know, the diary. Sure, of, uh, yeah, the yeah. Kid, uh, Last Kids on Earth, you know, which are, you know, solid 200 page adventures, all done in the sequential art, the panel, the word balloon format. You know, so so we have all ages. We have a massive group of people that come dressed up cosplaying and also you can meet a Superman of all different sizes walking, you know, in the aisles between the dealers selling toys and comics and cards. It, you know, it, 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 it is something that has become a, a way of expression now for a wide right. variety of people. Comics are not just superheroes. You know? No, no. And yeah. I think that's yeah. what many of us think. We think Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, uh, those superheroes. But there is so much more to it than that today. And as you point out, some of these graphic novels that are still considered comics because of the, uh, the, the balloon speak and the frames that, goes, that go by. Yes. And, and uh, you know, we forget that comics have always been there in the newspaper. You know, the Sunday newspaper. Oh, yeah, yeah. Strips. You know, we all just loved them as a kid, taking our sully putty and laying them on and transferring the images. And we also <laughs> forget, you know, that comics are editorial cartoons. Comics are animation, cartooning. You know, it covers a wide variety of art forms, and it reaches a massive audience of people above and beyond Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, the Incredible Hulk, you know. 
Well, I think many people. I think many people will show up at FallCon at the Bloomington Armory. Again, if you go to MN cba.org you can get more information about this but i think many people will show up joel and probably plan to spend uh the bulk of their their day and afternoon there and i appreciate your jumping on the air with me here just to share a little bit of an insight into all of this as we uh as we get this chance um and look forward now your session um just briefly here in the in the 30 seconds i've got left joel your session will feature uh what again coming up from I'm like 11 to 11 45. The, i'm gonna, I'm Go gonna talk about the history of comic cons you know oh. from 1973 to the present i'm joined by paul eward who was one of the guys at the annie parlors group that started in the 1988 and I don't know how we're going to cover everything in 45 minutes, but we're going to try and do it. Uh, Superman faster than a speeding bullet. And okay. John, <laughs> yeah. when it comes to comics, we are all just kids at heart. Well, there you go. Again, Joel Thingvall uh, talking about Minnesota Comic Book Association Fall Con 23 uh, on the 28th from, uh, from 10 o'clock until 4 and Joel's session will go from 11 to 11.45. Have a great time. I look forward to hearing more about it, Joel. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, John. We'll be right back. News Talk 830 WCCO.